4 is a waste of hard drive space, has shitty graphics, is loaded with glitches, and is ruining your relationships. Just kidding, Fallout 4 has reinvigorated my love for gaming because it's the first time I haven't felt on rails or guided to do a certain thing in a long time. The freedom that this game gives you is incredible and most of that freedom is now spent in the game's incredibly impressive crafting mode. Now the game isn't without its faults. Sure, it's got plenty of people online saying that game breaking bugs are ruining their experience. Most of these complaints are coming from the PC Master Race community. And you know how hard it is to impress those fucking Nazis. Mm -hmm. Besides, most of that could be chalked up to their personal systems just not being good enough and not cooperating with the game. So there, your fault. Yep. Get a better fucking system, you yeah. stupid idiot. Exploring the vast wasteland is truly an amazing, immersive experience. And no, I'm not gonna lie, when I was about three or four hours into this game, I wanted to throw my fucking controller against the wall, toss my Xbox out the window, and give up on gaming in general forever. You can see the actual texts I sent to Maddie while I was under an NDA on the podcast this Sunday to prove that point. But then Sunday morning, last Sunday morning, I broke through. The game just clicked for me. And now as I close in on 20 hours of total gameplay so far, I'm split between feeling like I haven't even scratched the surface and also feeling accomplished by what I've faced and conquered in this amazing game. Okay, but we'll stop this Fallout 4 business for now because Shibby has a real ethical review coming yeah. at the end of the video like always, but what we will say, at least for those of you on PC, is that uh, none of us can wait to see what the modding community is gonna actually cook up for this title. The sheer amount of customization and unique shit that you can do already in the regular game alone is mind-blowing, and once mods start rolling in, this beast will truly be untouchable. Yep, there's already one where you, uh, when you crank the gun, it plays Pop Goes the do -do 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 -do. Boom! Anyways, uh, also, I, I do want to say this, fuck you if you think the graphics sucks and that's why you're not playing it. The graphics are fine, and this game actually totally proves that graphics aren't everything. But still, the graphics are totally, totally fine considering the sheer scale of the game and the fact that you can touch, grab, steal, loot, customize, upgrade, do whatever to everything. Okay, now moving on, seriously, there are other fucked up stories from the gaming industry this week that we can talk about, like this one, where some people from the Grand Theft Auto modding community are saying that Rockstar sent what is basically the men in black to their doorstep in order to intimidate them and get them to stop modding the game. Yeah, what the fuck, right? Well, here's why. These guys were working on something called the 5M mod, which basically makes it so that pirated copies of GTA V could still access some sort of multiplayer. How? By creating a, quote, unauthorized alternate multiplayer service. So you could obviously see why Rockstar would be upset by something like this. Okay, yeah. yeah. They even blocked accounts tied to the modders from Rockstar Social Club earlier this year, but apparently that wasn't enough to dissuade them from their goal, so Rockstar allegedly sent two private investigators to their doors. I see nothing wrong. Now, one of the modders posted the following on Reddit. I just got a pair of PIs at my door claiming to be sent by Take-Two, handing me a phone with a person somewhere in the UK or US or whatever to discuss how to cease my activities with regard to Grand Theft Auto and that they know what happened before with Activision and want to not get the lawyers involved at this time. Guys, we don't want to get the lawyers involved, so just, just stop, please. I don't want to fuck up your kneecaps either. Take your talents and go develop real games. I get, you know, the moral of the story is don't risk your freedom so that you can help people pirate games, use your talents in a good way, go get a job at Take-Two. This all seems straight, pretty straightforward to me. Now, some of the modders claim that they just developed an alternative to the Rockstar multiplayer experience, but still, I mean, it's very clear to see why Rockstar isn't keen on this type of stuff happening with their game. Yeah. Also, if you follow the Sean Poole rule of $1 <laughs> one hour, yeah. GTA V is one of the most economical titles you can possibly buy. Absolutely. Like, it's been around for, what, two and a half, three years yeah. at this point. It's You're got unlimited play time. Like, just, what is it, $40 now? Come on, just go get it. Stop being such a cheap ass. But guess what? Battlefront update of the week. Pew pew. You can oh, now play, <laughs> you do? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, pew pew. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you can now play Star Wars Battlefront right now if you have EA access. Now, right pro, now. pro tip, just pay for one month and then cancel it. It's five bucks, you get to play this game early. It's totally worth it since your parents' credit card is tied to your account anyway, you millennial piece of shit. Yeah. Dance. Get a job. Yeah. Anyway, let's go back to the topic of the week because damn it, it's permeating our culture and we would be remiss not to talk about it more before Shibby's epic 
game-changing final nail in the coffin review. Yeah, have you been playing Fallout 4 and thought, yeah, I mean, this is cool, but where do I put my dick? Exactly. Or it would be a lot cooler if it was made for Oculus or any number of other virtual reality devices. Well, good news, because someone has already done basically that exact thing, and it's made possible by some company that we've done no research on, so I mean, don't obviously don't trust their products just because of us, but their name is VorpX, and they turn first-person games into 3D virtual reality experiences. Yeah, they just released Vorp X 0.9.1, which includes preliminary support for Fallout 4. Now again, we have no idea how well this works, but I know that in my experience of sitting like two feet away from the TV screen and playing, that's probably gonna be not only disorienting, but also probably really terrifying when feral ghouls come running at you in VR. Yeah, and everyone's pretty, everyone's one-time playthrough of this game is like six hours at a time. That is yeah, too a long, long to be in a VR headset. Yeah, uh, get up every once in a while. Still, walk around. How awesome is that? Yeah. We're inching closer and closer to a fully immersive gaming experience. Well, whether that turns out to be a good thing or something that just ends humanity single-handedly is yet to be seen, but damn it, we're gonna do it. Yeah. Now moving on, one of the most fun and shareable parts of Fallout 4 so far comes right out of the gate with the game's character creation engine. And sure, it's basically the same thing that they had in Skyrim, minus lizards and cats and shit, but <laughs> the things that people have been creating are truly works of art. Let's check some of them out. Here's Beavis and Butthead. Hulk Hogan. Jillian Anderson and David Duchovny. Oh, good marketing for X-Files. Yeah. Fucking Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin. He would last the longest in the real wasteland. I think so. Uh, of course, Heisenberg's there. Oh wait, what, what's that? We have one more? What could it possibly- His name is John C. Now that's a meme I'll never get tired of. Yeah. Uh, this game is truly a masterpiece, and if you think we're pandering, fuck you. We can actually like stuff, so piss off. And if you think we're getting paid for this, we fucking wish. That'd be nice. I know. Anyways, let's see if Shibby ruins all this goodwill with his review of Fallout 4. Take it, Shibs! We are so excited for this one. Yeah. Oh, you got a little mini nuke. Mm. Take a deep breath. <clears throat> tweet after tweet, I've been asked, Shibby, please review the most important game of the year, Rise of the Tomb Raider. <laughs> I won't deny that I want to explore Lara Croft's hidden treasure. Oh. I can't help but check the newest AAA indie release from Bethesda, Fallout 4. Mm -hmm. As the sole survivor here on Tugs of Vault 010, let's step into the future, Boston, where last time I got... I lost this fuckboy Ricky in go-karts, which I'm still salty about. No, I'm from Florida, you can't be- And you lost your leg. Yeah. I lost my leg. I lost my leg! That's an AFK reference. Yeah. Farmville Sanctuary 4 is one of the buggiest <laughs> pieces of software I've ever had the disservice of interfacing with in the last year. I don't understand how Bethesda develops Fallout 3 in 2008, publishes New Vegas in 2010, develops Skyrim in 2011, yet Fallout 4 released basically 1,500 days since then and graphically looks the same exactly as the three other titles. Oh, you're lying. What the hell? But Shibby, it's not all about the graphics, it's about the open world and the experience. That's what I said. Did no one play Witcher 3? <laughs> Why are those things mutually exclusive? Why not spend some of the billion dollars that Bethesda has made for all you Bethesda drones out there <laughs> on a new engine and try to properly QA some of that shit? God forbid they're stable frame rate on either the Peasant Station 4 or that other console, and then mustard race users beware. Playing on anything higher than basic 120 frames per second doubles the game speed on PC. How is this shit acceptable in 2015? Did no one think PC players would try and go above 60 frames? 120 frames? Why do you need all those frames? I, that. I, I like it. Keep it at 24 frames. Looks like a movie. <laughs> Love it. If you can survive the frame rates, Awful optimization across all platforms, legacy bugs from prior, prior titles, mostly non-coherent story, dated animations, disappointing AI pathing, lacking RPG options, then you're in for a real treat of a video game. Well, I'll follow forward. I love when I interact with NPCs that are walking into the wall like this. Jimmy, I've got a quest for you. Oh, quest giver, here, take this and go there. Well, I've, I've got it, give me my caps. Oh, here's the caps. And no, well, here's the caps. Oh, thanks for my caps. Yeah. While Fallout 4 may be recycled more than the crops I pick up and plant in my settlements, the game is engrossing, fast, and simply a ton of content to consume like my psycho addiction in game. Mods will surely give the game legs for years, for months, if not years to come. Fallout 4 is sort of like the crazy hot slutty girlfriend who you've been getting annoyed with because she's crazy, she has her problems, and dresses like a hipster, but is all over the place. And at the end of the day, you still get to play with her luscious tits, but it makes it all worth it. 10 out of 10.
That was a really weird ending. Yeah. So it's good? Is it good? Fantastic. Okay, great. Oh, good. So, 10 out of 10, you said? That's uh, right. That's, that's the, I think that's the second time that's actually happened, though, technically. He gave Mad Max 10, or uh, Batman, right? Anyway, Shibby is a slimy piece of shit synth who can't be trusted. So where do we go? Over to the Amazon location in Diamond City to see what people said about Fallout 3. So this one is titled, Tedious Game, Really Bad, from user Mercs, who says, Played for a few hours in the bunker, didn't get out. Tedious. Okay, in 20 plus years of playing video games, I have never not been able to enter a game. So I guess it's not me, but rather this pathetic game. This is what happens here. You have to punch guys which are poorly animated and they clobber you with clubs all the while you search for exits, all of which are locked mainly. Exciting. What a train wreck of a game. Only reason I continued was to get out and see world, but I heard that's just more of a tedious chore, so why bother? If the developers of this game think this is even remotely fun, then they simply are that out of touch with the gaming masses and not just video game lunatics with no life who can spend weeks playing this tedious game. What kind of sicko makes a game like this? And worse yet, how can people even praise this game? Also, the game I heard crashes constantly. Avoid at all costs. A colossal waste of time just to figure out the designers of this twisted logic into thinning that gamers would enjoy in any way whatsoever a sickening quest to find maddening secret ways to fight off roaches and horridly animated, almost pixelated looking stick soldiers. All in all, a blurry opening bunker that takes perhaps hours to get out of. I threw this in Thrash, didn't even bother returning. Put in Borderlands 2, then played some Resistance 3 multiplay. <laughs> or <laughs> mo moody play. <laughs> yeah. Van played some Resistance 3 moody play and some Uncharted 3. <laughs> <laughs> Now those games are actually a blast and fun, not this horror. Update! Oh shit, we have an update. This is one of the first updates I've seen to review. Hopefully it changes his mind. Uh, update, broke out of bunker. Took out of trash for one last go around. <laughs> they pulled it out of the trash to play it again. Broke out of bunker, real exiting, not. Was still a mess getting out and having 1990s video game type conversations with everyone. How is that fun? Also stopping at every last locker and place to get items? Again, how is that fun? Pathetic game. Avoid and get something fun instead and not a chore to play as this game is. Well, uh, <laughs> wow. I don't know. Hey, uh, Electronic Gaming Monthly, give that, <laughs> give that <laughs> guy a job. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm sure that this guy will just love this year's version of Bunker Escape Simulator, <laughs> but we'll have to wait and see what his review is when he posts it. I guess. He's probably gonna throw it in the thrash. Yeah, yeah, this instantly goes in the thrash. The game is not exiting. Yeah, Fallout Boy 4. Anyways, I was completely surprised by this game. I have not been a fan of the Fallout series in general. Uh, I didn't really care for Fallout 3. Uh, this game totally changed my mind. I'm having a blast. Uh, I don't know what the hell is gonna happen when I play Battlefront, because uh, I can download it tonight. Don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm probably gonna be thinking about building my fucking gigantic sanctuary base. I right don't now. know. You haven't played it yet. Oh, You're still in the dark. Battlefront seems I'm like a much, good. like, I'm commitment phobic, so Battlefront seems like a much more fun game. Whereas Fallout 4, I'm afraid, will devour my life. Yeah, it pretty much has for me. Yeah, I don't know about that. Every night, I'll, I'll play, play it. it. Yeah, but it, I, this, it, you know what? I missed that. I missed the, the experience of doing that. I, everything's been too busy these days. It's nice to have a game literally suck the life the out of me. The experience of uh, having to rub the life back into your legs when you stand up yeah. after six hours oh, sitting down. Yeah. You forget that you haven't eaten for 20 hours. Watch the sun come up and be like, fuck, I gotta go to work in two hours. Or just don't go to work, as some uh, people do. Yeah, a few people. Just don't uh, show up. Yeah. Got, got I'm playing a video game though. Okay. Don't try that at your It's your, your vacation job. day, I guess. Anyways. <laughs> uh, we have some stuff over here. We have a new episode of Weekly Weird News. We have a Tech Tuesday and also a podcast. So you should watch those instead of this. Anyways, we actually like the game. What do you think about that? Cancel.